In the previous lesson, we learned how to calculate magnetic flux. But I'm not sure if you can remember our lesson or one or two lessons before that, we said that if you want to produce electricity, the magnetic field has to change. Do you remember when I showed you that animation? And if I just hold the magnet in the same position, there was no electricity. Of course there was a magnetic flux, there was lots of magnetic flux, but if you do not move that magnet and you keep the magnetic flux the same, nothing will happen. So, all magnets produce magnetic flux, but if you do not cause a change, nothing will happen. Okay? So we, in the previous lesson, learned how to calculate magnetic flux by using this formula. Okay, that is how you calculate magnetic flux at a specific point. But now we're going to go a little bit further. So if you have a look at this example, we can see that the magnet moves from there. Now it has been moved up to there. And if you move it really quickly, there would be electricity flowing. Okay, so there should be a little light showing over here. The only reason I couldn't do it was that simulation. Yeah, it's a bit of a complicated thing. It didn't want to let me take a screenshot while the light was still showing. So um, as soon as you cause the magnet to change from one place to another, there will be electricity flowing if you do it fast enough. So. Here, the magnetic flux looks like this, and then over here, it's a little bit further away, and so you've got less magnetic field lines going through the loop, but as long as you caused a change to take place, you would actually see that light bulb glowing. And the faster that you could move that magnet from the one place to the other, the brighter the light bulb. Because if you move it very slowly, you wouldn't really see anything, okay? You've got to do it quite quickly. And so what I want us to quickly do now is to calculate the amount of magnetic flux in the first diagram on the left-hand side, and then we're going to calculate the magnetic flux on the right-hand side. So we know how to calculate magnetic flux. We use our formula, B times A times cos theta. And so they tell us here that the magnetic field strength is 5, so we know that. The area of that loop is 5, and theta is equal to 0. So the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal would be 0. Because if I had to draw a normal going at 90 degrees to the loop, and I had to draw the magnetic field lines, we can see that that angle is 0. So let's quickly do our calculation. What we would see is that theta would be equal to 5, multiplied by the area, which is 5, multiplied by cos 0 and that would give us 25 Weber. Then, in the second scenario, it's the same magnet, however the field strength is less. The reason for that is that the further away you are from the loop, the field strength becomes weaker. So the magnet's probably quite strong over here, but as it moves away from the magnet, that strength decreases. And then we've also got the normal line going over here, and we've got a magnetic field line, and we can see that the angle is 60 degrees. So let's work out the new theta, or the new um, magnetic flux, sorry. That's going to be equal to 2 multiplied by the area. The area of the loop is obviously still going to stay the same, because it's the same loop. And then we're going to multiply that by the cos of 60. And so that's going to give us an answer. If you do that on the calculator, that will give us an answer of 5 Weber. Aha! So have a look at that, guys. The magnetic flux was 25, and now it's 5. Has it changed? Yes, it has. And so if we move it fast enough from this position to this position, you will actually create electricity. Because we said that in order to create electricity, you can't only have magnetic flux. You have to have a change in magnetic flux. And so the speed in which we change the magnetic flux makes a huge difference to the amount of electricity that we would be able to generate. So let's try that again, working out the magnetic flux for each situation, and then we need to somehow include time. So for the first scenario, we've now got a magnetic field strength of 3 tesla, 
the loop area is five meters squared and theta is zero. So if we want to work out the magnetic flux, we would say B times A times cos theta. And so we would end up getting three times five times cos of zero. If you type this in on your calculator, you would get 15 Weber. Now moving over to this side, on the right hand side, they tell us that the magnetic flux strength or field strength, sorry, is one. That's because we're further away. And then they also have area of loop and then theta. Now remember, theta is always the angle between the normal, which always goes at 90 degrees to the loop, and a magnetic flux line. So this angle here would be 60. So if we work out the magnetic flux, that's going to be B times A times cos theta. And so that's going to be equal to 1 multiplied by 5 multiplied by cos 60. And if you calculate that, you would end up with 2,5 Weber. So we can see that the magnetic flux has changed. How much has it changed by? 12,5 Webers, because it went from 15 to 2,5. So it changes by 12,5 Weber. And so what we now do to include the time is we divide it by 2, and that's going to give us 6,25. I'm not going to give you any units for now. I'm going to talk to you about that carefully just now. But for now, just remember, you can think of it as the amount of electricity that we'll be able to generate is 6.25. We don't call it the amount of electricity. I'm going to explain all of that just now, but for now I'm just trying to get you to understand that we're producing about 6.25. Now we're going to Now if we took that same calculation but we changed the time to 4 seconds, which means we're taking longer to move it then what you would be doing is you'd be dividing by a larger number. And so instead of getting 6,25, you would end up getting 3,125 Weber. And so what we can see is that the longer the amount of time, the smaller the amount of electricity that you would be able to produce. So you've got to move it as fast as possible. And so a few seconds ago, I was calling it the amount of electricity, but that's not technically correct. What it is, is when you change the magnetic flux around a, a loop of wire, it causes a voltage to be induced inside the wire. So it causes a voltage to appear in the wire. Now to calculate that voltage, we are going to use Faraday's equation, which looks like this. All right. Now we have been dealing with all of this already. We haven't really been looking at N, so forget about that for now. But this over here stands for change in magnetic flux. And that's what we've been calculating in the previous few slides, where Change means the final magnetic flux minus the initial magnetic flux. And then we also divide it by time. Remember, if I go up here, we worked out the magnetic flux over here, and we worked out the magnetic flux here, and then we saw how much the change was, and then we divided that by time. The end part shouldn't really worry you too much. All that that stands for is how many loops does the wire have. So for example, you could have a single loop of wire like that, or let me rather come up here, or we could have had multiple loops, okay? So you could have had a whole lot of loops like that. And so the more loops you have, the stronger the magnetic flux. And so this equation is called Faraday's equation for electromagnetic induction. So electromagnetic induction. Let me explain what this means. So electro meaning we are producing electricity. Magnetic is meaning we are including some magnets to help us. And then induction means to cause something to have something. So by us moving the magnets around, we are able to cause electricity to flow inside the wire. So we are inducing 
electricity to be able to flow. And so we call this whole process electromagnetic induction. So let's quickly analyze this equation. This stands for the EMF. You can think of it as how much electricity gets produced. N is the number of loops or turns. Some teachers call it turns. This part here is the change in the magnetic flux. So what it is, is it's the magnetic flux in the final position minus the electromagnetic flux in the initial position. And then this should actually have a triangle. What this part stands for here is time. So if you can make the number of loops more, then it causes this number to become bigger. So I'm going to say here, if n increases, then your EMF will also increase. If you can cause the change to be very big, then you're also going to cause EMF to become big. So if the change is very big, then your EMF is also going to go big. But now because the time is at the bottom, it works opposite. If time goes up, then your EMF will go down. Because we said that the faster, oh sorry, if the time goes up, it means that you're moving the magnets very slowly because the time is going up. And that means that the amount of electricity or the EMF will go down. And so let's quickly practice using Faraday's equation. So the goal is to try work out how much electricity is going to be produced. Um, so we use Faraday's equation. And so let's fill in a couple of things. So n is the number of loops. Now have a look here. There are three loops. Can you see that? So that's n. The time is going to be one second. And so we need to work out the change in the magnetic flux. Now change is the magnetic flux final minus the in magnetic flux initial. That's very important that it's always final minus initial, not initial minus final. So let's quickly work out the final magnetic flux. So we know that that's always going to be equal to B times A times cos theta. And so B for this one, the magnetic strength is 1. The area of the loop is 5 and theta is 60. So we'll say cos 60. And that's going to give us 2.5 Weber. We can now work out the magnetic flux initially. And that's going to be equal to obviously B times A times cos theta. And that's going to be B, which is 5, times the area, which is 5, times cos of 0, which is going to be 22.5 Weber. Now, guys, stick to the formula. It's very important. So the formula says that the EMF is going to be equal to negative. Then the number of turns is 3. To work out the change in the magnetic flux, you take the final one, even though it's smaller, and you minus the initial one, which is 22.5, and you divide that by the time, which is 1. So go ahead, type that in on the calculator, and that's going to give you 60. Now, the 60 is EMF, and it's measured in volts. So what this means is that you change the magnetic flux around the wire. That causes the wire to develop a voltage so the magnetic field induces a voltage inside the wire and then because of that voltage electricity would start to flow in that wire and that is all called electromagnetic induction using magnets to induce a voltage inside a wire which produces electricity there we go guys thank you very much